So I'm getting ready to uh, cut up some wood for a skid steer attachment. I got some forklifts that I have right over here that I got at uh, Uncle Gigi. There they are. I think I paid 40 bucks for it. And uh, I went to the local scrap yard and I picked up some angle iron or some C channel there. This is six inch by two inch. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it for the length to go between the top, this side and that one over there. I'll put one here and I'll put one at the oops, put one at the bottom and weld them together. That's the first step I'm gonna do. We'll see how it turns out. Okay, so what I did is I cut the uh, C channel, cut the bottom part off and clamped it where I wanted it and then took a piece of uh, angle or straight iron, uh, inch and a quarter, just fit it in there and just tack welded it for now. Then I did the same thing for the bottom. Now I'm getting ready to cut out the holes for where the pins are going to go. Just kind of had a look at the, the ones on the bucket here and they don't need to be this wide. I only need to put this much but I'm going to cut it that wide. And so I measured it and uh, Marked it down right here. There's one hole here and the other one there. I'm going to cut that out with the plasma cutter and uh, then take another piece of metal this way and weld it in. And of course, I'll have to cut out the hole as well and uh, then weld it together or tack it at least. And uh, that's the next step. Okay, so this is how far I got. I got the bottom pieces welded in. And uh, I had to grind it out just a little bit up here because it was just a bit too tight. And then what I actually did is uh, the edge of the C-channel that I had cut off, I took it right here and I welded it on the side right here and there. I just tacked it right now, but as you can see, it's nice and flat. So then I'll be able to weld the other piece on here and on the bottom uh, where I can hook up the forks. So I think what I'm going to do is take it off and uh, finish welding all of this and uh, try it again, make sure that it still fits and then I can move on to the next part. Okay, so I figured I'll give a quick update here. This is the uh, top plate that I'm going to use to hold the forks up against and I used one inch by two inch by three sixteenths thick square tubing right here and then a half inch by three inch plate and I haven't finished welding it yet but uh, what I did is I cut the notches out on uh, this is where the the forks are gonna latch into so they don't slide back and forth and I'm still gonna have to weld I started welding it I'm gonna do about three inch um, run of weld every I don't know, every nine inches or so probably one in the middle one on each end and then one in between the same down below here I've gotten three done I've got one more here and then for the bottom I have three eighths inch plate by three inch wide and then a one and a quarter by one and a quarter square tubing only at an eighth of an inch Again, here what I did at the bottom, I cut out the notch and uh, I had to use the plasma cutter. It worked really well. This part I used with the bandsaw and, uh, and then this part here I used the plasma cutter. I'm quite happy with it. That's the one I got a couple of years ago there, the uh, LGK. It's a 40 amp plasma cutter by, by Hitbox. Um, I did a review on that actually as well. And no, I'm not getting paid for, by them to do this. I'm just very pleased with it. So that's the update. And uh, next thing, I'm going to finish welding this plate. And then weld it up on here. Actually, I'll probably just tack it for now. Make sure the forks move smoothly and everything. And then the bottom one will go there. And then that's it. they got to paint. And then I'm, oh, actually, I might uh, put a couple uh, pieces in here. Maybe one up here and one over here just to give it a little extra, extra strength and I might even weld a hook on it. I don't know yet, we'll see. Okay, so this is how far I've gotten. I got uh, the top plate notched out and uh, welded together. I used a little reinforcement here on the side. So that's the one inch by two inch and then a half inch plate. At the bottom, I used a three eighths inch plate 
and uh, notched it down here. So that way I can take the forks out or off, I guess. So now the only thing that I need to do is uh, fill in some spacers in here. Not quite sure what I'm going to do yet because I used the edge of the C channel. So I'm not sure if this is very easily visible here, but it's a, it's a bit angled like this. This up here, let's see if it'll focus. This is thinner than this side. So I'm going to have to uh, do a little bit of notching. But yeah, everything else is done and reinforced and finished welded. So those few things at the top and the hook or maybe a, I don't know what I'm going to do, maybe a hook up there. And that's it. It's ready for painting and ready for using. There we go. The finished beauty. I decided to weld a big loop there at the top just in case I have to hook up a chain or a belt or something. And uh, put the vertical pieces in there so that will stabilize things a lot. And everything is welded up. And all I gotta do now is paint it, and then she's ready to be put in use. So that was a that was a fun project. I had some issues with the welder, but that's mostly because uh, I had to use a lot of uh, rusty material. And uh, but overall, that was a fun project. It's forty four and a half inches wide which will perfectly fit on my Kubota. And the forks are super heavy. Each one of them is probably 100 pounds. Well, maybe not. I should, I should weigh them. But anyways, I hope this is going to inspire someone else to try something like this. All right, so it's the next day, and I finished painting this with rust paint. I forgot my paint gun at the cabin, so I ended up just using the brush. And I think it actually turned out better that way. You can put a little thicker coat on that way. Because the uh, C channel, you can see it's really bumpy because uh, it was quite rusty actually. So this will have some time to soak into. So all I got to do now is put a little bit of grease along the top and some at the bottom so that the forks slide better. And then I can connect it to the Kubota and put it away. And here's the forks. Also painted those. They're older and it really it's just a cosmetic thing. Um, but it turned out pretty quick, pretty easy. Took me two evenings and about a 45 minutes on the third night. And now I'm all done. All right, so here's the finished product. Forks installed and uh, they're movable. And I am very happy. This is going to be a nice accessory to have, especially moving things around at the cabin. I can put uh, tree stumps and tree trunks on that. I can move the forks closer together and move rocks with it. Um, I even have the holes inside of the forks up there, right there and there, in case I ever wanted to put a hitch ball on it, which I probably won't, but even hooking even hooking chains to it will make it much easier. And I am very glad I got that quick attach um, front end of the Kubota. It was an extra 500 bucks over the pin on, but this will make it a lot easier. So anyways, I'm very pleased with the way that it turned out. This is a really solid um, piece. And uh, I know it's gonna have many years of good service.